Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Online Smicha. It's this time of the year when Bnei Yisrael are mahadir to invest, to do a mitzvah at its very best. This is one of the only mitzvahs where the Torah clearly says that we look to be mekayim it in a way of hadar, in a beautiful manner. Yes, we have Zek Heli Van Veyu, that the Chazal tell us from that Pasuk, we know that every mitzvah a yid should try to do it in the best possible way. But this one has a, this mitzvah of the Dalad Minim, and especially the Esrig, we have pre eight Hadar, and from there we know that the, 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 the item that you use as an Esrig should be the most beautiful one that you're able to invest. And you find, Baruch Hashem, Yidin are makbid to, to spend a lot of money on what seems to be a simple fruit. When it comes to the halachas, there are halach, a simon in Shulchan Aruch for each one of them. There is a simon in Shulchan Aruch, uh, what's a kosher lulav, what issues may there be with a lulav. What, there is a simon in Shulchan Aruch, what's, what, what issues may there be with the hadasim, same with the aravis. And then today I'll, I'll speak about one issue, which is a fascinating shuva from Rav Moshe Feinstein, uh, about the, the esrig. Everybody knows that the Esrig people look with magnifying glasses. If you have to look at them through a magnifying glass, or it only has to be apparent to the eye, that's a discussion for, in itself. But people, each one, each individual has his own chumrah, his own minig, what makes the Esrig look beautiful, the shape, the size, etc., the color, etc., etc. So I'll discuss a halacha, but I will first bring the halacha, and see how it's relevant to the Shiloh that Amosha discusses. In Simon Tafresh Memches, Sif Chaf Hey, the Alter Rebbe speaks about uh, an Esrig HaKavush. What is an Esrig HaKavush? To, to introduce this, the Alter Rebbe says, the Esrig HaMavushal, if the Esrig was cooked, it's puzzle. It has to be raw. It v'chein im kavush, and if the Esrig was soaking in water, Soaking f- for a long time, it's also possible. Why? Says the Alter Rebbe, Shahakavush Kamavushal, because the Chachamim established that soaking in, w- in liquid for a long time does what cooking does in, in a short time. The Ezu Kavush, what's considered Kavush, and which would be problematic for an Esrig, Kol Shem Nishra Me'esla Es Bamayim, if it was soaking for 24 hours in water. Oy b'shar mashkin, or any other liquid, ume peres, or fruit juice, v'afilu b'dvash, or even if it's sitting immersed in honey, shadar k'y l'havit ha'mid dover ha'kavosh b'soychay, afal p'kein nifsa l'esrig. If the esrig was sitting in any of these above-mentioned liquids, then if it was there for 24 hours, the esrig becomes pasal, mishum kavosh me'es l'es. Now there is a way how this could be even faster than 24 hours, it could already be a problem. If there was a, a spice, if it was spicy, in Kavshe if it was marinating in vinegar, Chaymetz Chazek, strong vinegar, Shehu Charev Ma'id, then it's much, much, much less. And that's a Shaila which is discussed in Yeridea. It could be even sitting there down to six minutes. Might, might even make it Mavushal. That's a discussion in Taruvis. What, what is the exact shear of Kavush Bitsir that it's Mavushal? So now we know one halacha that a uh, esrig that's sitting in water is a problem. It's a big problem if it's sitting in water for a long time, for sure, 24 hours. That's one din I want to discuss. Another, I want to bring up. The next din is I am actually going to bring from the Gemara. There is a Gemara in Mesech the Sukkah, Daflamid Vav, Amid Aleph. When the Gemara says, Boi Rava, Rava asked a question, a very strange question. Somehow Rava felt that there is a similarity between the dinim of Esrog and the dinim of Trefa. Trefa means an animal which we find out after it was shechted, we find out, we, we check the lungs, the vital organs, that this animal was not a healthy animal. It would not survive on its own for, let's say, 12 months. Then we render that behemoth treif. 
So all the all the the bedikas and all the things that we do to verify if the animal was healthy or not, quote unquote, tereif or kasher. So that is a concept which we do in Bali Chaim when you shecht an animal. Rava comes along and says, Noel du be'esrik simone trefa mahu. Somehow Rava felt there is a similarity. Just like when you when you have to verify an animal, an animal has you have the ways you have the signs and the the bad signs say, oh, oh this is a bad animal. This is an animal that that's treif. What happens if an esrig, a esrig uh, also gave noildu? Noildu means you found on the esrig a similar problem like you would find in the animal that you would render a treif. And the Gemara goes on to discuss what type of comparison is it. Uh, so he speaks about the peeling of the lung, a puncture in the lung, a crushed lung, uh, applying it to the esrig. Uh, all these things, a hole, a, 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 a smashed, a crashed, all these things. The question now, now that you know these two Gemaras, these two Halachas, actually the Gemara I, I mentioned, it's a Iboya de la Ifshita. It's a question the Gemara brings up, and we, we have different opinions. Do we look at the end product, or do we look at as it is right in front of us? That basically is what Rava was saying about the, the comparison to the tray for animal. These two halachas is what Ramosha Feinstein brings in Eira Chaim Simen Kuf Pei where he's asked, and this, you know, today's days we live in this Baruch Hashem and, and, and everything is accessible. You, you, could, you could call by internet and, and you get something tomorrow, overnight shipping, etc., etc., Rav Moshe was asked in Tav Shin Yud Zayin, 1957. Somebody asked him, if I put an esrig in the freezer and I keep it to next year, and now, or not necessarily next year, I got an esrig a couple of months before Sukkot. I wanted the esrig to stay fresh, so I kept it in the freezer. And now on Sukkot, I, I open it up, and the first day it was, it was good looking, everything was fine. But as it progresses through Sukkot, I see that it's changing color. And by the end of Sukkot, it's, it looks rotten. Does that mean that because at the end product, the end, what I see at the end, you see it's a rotten item. It just delayed it because it was frozen. Does that make the esteric puzzle? Or do we say at the time of the mitzvah, when he was fulfilling the mitzvah, it still looked good, then it's not a problem. This was a Shiloh that was asked by Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, again in Eir Chaim, Simen Kuf Pehe. So Rabbi Moshe comes at this from two points, the two points I mentioned before. To say that the fact that it was, it was uh, frozen, and it was frozen, usually uh, uh, frozen is liquid, it tur- the ice turns into water. If that would be considered a Indian like Kavush, so Rav Moshe proves from many halachas that kavush is only if it's immersing in water. If it's froze, and, not, and it could be that this esrig wasn't even frozen in water. You just put it into the freezer as is. And even if it was frozen with water, says Rav Moshe, I'm not sure, based on many halachas that you learn from Hilchus and Malicha, that ice is like water. Kavush is only b'mayim. The, the rule of Kavosh Kamavosha will not apply by ice. So there is no psul of Kavosh in the freezer. How about the second, the second discussion? The fact is that the, the, fro, the freezing of the esteric just delays, just delay, gives it more breathing time to survive a couple of days, but, but it's really not it. So Rav Moshe asks, what about that? And he says, it's basically, that's, that's the discussion of the Gemara I mentioned before. And that Gemara, there is no clear answer. So he suggests like this. Because the Rif and the Rambam say that the Chumrah, we are not allowed to use an esteric like the problem the Gemara mentions. They were not talking about a frozen esteric. They were talking about a different type of esteric which has a similar problem. So therefore, I suggest, says Ramosha, 
Av Baleka Esrig Acher, even if this is the only Esrig you have, there is no other Esrig for you to find. Fine, you could use it, but don't make a bracha. I, I can't tell you that you that the mitzvah was fulfilled in a way that you're allowed to make a bracha. And he goes and continues and says, that's even though the Mishnah Brewer says that if you have no other esrig, no other choice, you could make a bracha. He says, I can't pass him that way because I see that the riff and the Rambam, um, the riff and the Rambam don't allow it. But he, he finishes off by this, by saying this. Please, he suggests people should do this and tell him how, uh, tell him what's what's going on. Please check very well before you decide about the status of this esrig, because sometimes just from one frozen esrig you can't really tell what caused this esrig to go bad. I suggest that you should put a couple of esrigim into the more than one. Put a couple of them, and you can even put a non-kosher one, a, a one that's for sure puzzle. So you should see, you should be able to evaluate, to estimate properly if the esrig at the end of uh, at the end of sukkis is really becoming bad, or there's other issues that are making it in this case becoming bad. And Ramosha holds that a uh, frozen esrig should not be used. And uh, and I'll tell you again, the Mishnah Brura does allow it if there's no other esrig. There's a famous sefer that many people use for these halachas, which is called Abbas Aminim Hashalem. And over there, he, they argue on their Moshe. And they say, that, that this is, this is an esrig that's allowed to be used. But this is the discussion as it's brought in the Shail Shachivah's firm.